1 Corinthians chapter 8. <clears throat> now as touching things offered unto idols. Now we're going to go into idolatry. We know that we have all knowledge. Knowledge puff is up, but charity added it. There are some people, the more they get to know, the more they get to be unknown. They fill their head with knowledge and, you know, look who I am. I'm as smart as you. I can look down upon you. I've got all these, this credibility and there's no charity. No love. There's no caring. And you just have head knowledge. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. You know, it just it comes down to pride, loftiness. You don't know half of what you know. And even when we read through the Bible, oh, I know this. We may get to heaven and find out, no, we did not know that. We would probably maybe see a whole different picture than what God has to show us. Look at this thing that God showed me in the Bible. It may not be so. Be careful where you get your, your learning from. Be careful, make sure you study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You got to make sure that it, it, whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to say, matches all the scriptures, all the dispensations. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. It's what people see. You can know anything. But what do people see? What is your motive? What is your character? As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered unto Offered in sacrifice unto idols. All right. In Corinth, there was a thing that the food would be offered to their local deity. Probably in the marketplace or if you went to a dinner. Like if, if you were go over a co your cousin Alice's house. And when you go over there, she's going to say grace and she's going to give it to the Virgin Mary the grace or if you go over to whatever religion and they have a prayer over the meal and it's not to Jesus Christ what do you do it says as concerning those things eating those things which are offered in sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is nothing in the world Nothing. But we know through Genesis to 1 Corinthians 1 8 that if you worship an idol, then you're in trouble. But as an idol is an idol as itself, God has power over it. We know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is no other God but one. In reality, in simpleness, you're a Christian, you believe the Bible. An idol is nothing. Santa Claus is nothing. The Easter Bunny is nothing. I mean, there's churches down the street. They're going to have an Easter. So what? You look at the denomination. Yeah, they're probably not saved anyway. So that's why they're going to have that mess. Now, if you get somebody who's saved and Christians and doing, and they're involved in idols, that's not what we're talking about right now. For though there be that are called gods, and there's all kinds of gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. Now Paul and the Holy Spirit will tell us there are gods, small g-o-d-s. They're there. And you can run your name on the internet and find most, if not all, the names of these gods. But to us Christians... There is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, the one Lord Jesus Christ, pointing out the D1, by whom are all things, and we by him. Everything is made by Jesus. That study was done in 1 John 1, Genesis 1. That is the God, the creator of all life, the creator that gave his life. That's the one. 
I don't need to worry about uh, Japanese gods. I don't need to worry about Greek gods. I don't need to worry about American gods. They don't do nothing for me. I want to know about Jesus. So, I look at them. They're dead. They're dumb. They're stupid. They're nothing. How be it? There is not in every man that that knowledge. Not everybody knows that. Not everybody knows Santa Claus is wrong. There it is. Written in the Bible. They have no idea what the Easter Bunny and all his concept is. They don't realize what Christmas is really about. They don't understand the difference between Easter and Passover. They don't understand what Mother's Day really is And when you look at the historical facts. They don't. And the Bible says, For some with conscience of idol, unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto the idol. Okay. This thing's given to this God. He prayed over it in this God. Okay, it's for the God. I'm doing it for this God. And their conscience being weak is defiled. So when that person knowing, all right, this has been dedicated to God X, whatever. Well, since it's been de dedicated to God X, I'm going to give it to God X, and God makes him weak. Because he's not doing to the God, the Creator, the Savior. And he gets weaker and weaker and weaker in religion. But meat, 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 meat. You know meat has been our trouble since Genesis 3? That fruit, whatever it was, that God said do not eat and was eaten by the two human beings that were on that planet. Here we are written about 59 AD. And there's still a food problem. And when you look at religions, there are in every creed of a religion, there is some kind of dietary thing. And yet in the Bible, as we study the Bible, going through, hopefully, as the Lord tarries, hopefully we'll finish Revelation 22 one day. We will see that we as Christians, with grace of God, if our body can handle it, we can eat food that was forbidden in the Old Testament. Now, I know personally, I can name three Christians I know who cannot eat pork. It bothers their stomach. And yet, if it didn't bother their stomach, they could eat it if they could thank the Lord for it. There are religions out there we've already discussed in this book about vegetation. No meats at all. If you take a study of eating... Just eating, not drinking, eating in the Bible, you will find a remarkable thing. As the entire disciples gathered together as one group, all 12 of them, before Jesus Christ, what were they doing? They were having the Last Supper. Were they all together in the Garden of Gethsemane? No. Judas was gone. Three of them went with Jesus. Were they all there present at the cross of Jesus? No. Judas was gone. Ten others were gone. And only John was there. Were they all present when Jesus came in the open room that, that time we went right through the door? No. Thomas was gone. They're out fishing. And they, 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 Hi, how you guys doing? Hey, it's Jesus. And the first thing you do, he's got food right there in the fire. Fish. And what's the three things he tells Peter to get Peter to confess and repent of his sin of denying him? Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. And then the church takes that as, okay, we're going to have spaghetti dinners. We're going to have fellowship dinners. No, you got to feed them the word. Man don't live by bread alone. I'm misquoting that verse. But by every word of the God. 
of the Bible. There are places in the Bible where there's two prophets, John and I think Ezekiel, were told to eat the word, the book. There are a bunch of people over India today, the true Indians. Over here, they're Native American. The true Indian. They are starving to death. They'll put commercials on TV. And you'll watch if it was really real TV in India, you would see a cow walk by. Wait a minute. How are they starving with a cow walking by? That's hamburger. Well, that's grandma. That may be Uncle Joe. That may be Sister Sam, whatever. No, that's your hamburger. It's your religion preventing you from eating. It's your God that's starving you to death. And here now we come to the Corinth church in civilized Asia. And when I set this plate down for you, I'm going to, like I said, we're going to pray to God X. Do you know there's a God X coming? That every food that you're going to get, you got to receive his name or his mark to get that food. And if you receive that mark, and if you receive that name, you are damned, and you will burn in hell. And then off to the lake of fire for all eternity by receiving a mark so you can eat. Said so you can't buy or eat without that mark. So this is a serious matter that Paul's bringing up to him. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol, I know it's to the idol, unto this hour eat it, as is a thing offered to that idol, God X. And their conscience being weak is defiled. So if a lost man eats in the honor of another God, has, has become defiled and weak, what do you think a Christian is going to be? But meat commendeth us not to God. It has nothing to do with worship of God. For neither if we eat, are we the better. Neither if we eat not, are we the worse. You want pork? Eat pork. You don't want pork? Don't eat pork. You want to have... Listen, I'll tell you right now, probably the most healthy diet would be salads. A little ham or something, or bacon or something like that. That would be a help, especially for me being diabetic. If I could have salad every day, and maybe a bun, I think my sugar levels would be a lot better. But is God going to condemn me because I'm going to have pork, or we're going to get ourselves a lobster, or, you know, try chocolate ants? Or caramel bumblebees. Is God going to say you're going to go to hell? I, I like. We used to have a, 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 a buffet over here, and they would have different kinds of food. I've tried seaweed. I like it. Very little before. I tried frog legs. I didn't like it. Now, because I had frog legs in my mouth, some religion out there probably say I'm going to go to hell forever. No. No. Because if there's some people say you're going to go to heaven by eating cauliflower, then I'm going to hell. You can't put that on people. But we're back at food again. In liberty. We have liberty, verse 8. I have no right, verse 8, for another Christian. Oh, you got to eat pork because we're on the grave. No. And neither they have a right to tell me you must. No. And we've already talked about this. You got somebody who's sitting with you, a Jewish person. Great example. I would not have a pork seafood dinner with a Jewish man because that would ruin your testimony of him believing the Old Testament and trying to lead him to Christ. You already offended him. Find out something he would approve of and order that. And if you did order lobster from a Jew, you're not going to hell, but you may bring him to hell. Because you may turn him off. And that's what we're going to get right here. But take heed least by any means this liberty. Your liberty of your of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Uh-oh. 
So this eating is not all my liberty. There are other people watching. And Peter fell into this trap that Paul had to scold him because he was sitting dining with a bunch of Gentiles. And then a bunch of Jews came. Peter got up and left. I forget which disciple was left behind. And that disciple was all confused on what, what's going on here. And that's what we're going to see right here. They are weak. And remember, we started off way back here to uh, the weak Christian. I forget how many, what chapter that was. So Paul is still speaking about the weak Christian. We got to help them. This church is weak. We got to help them. We can't do anything for a Christian that is weak in the faith, growing as a babe in faith, saying, wait a minute. If you're doing that, maybe I can do that. Now, I remember my grandpa well hid alcohol in the house. My grandpa never drank. But I knew later on that that alcohol was for only one purpose. He had very sensitive teeth that even the, the, the dental paste that he used wouldn't work. And he would only use it in his mouth to swish it for the pain. Now, any other Christian who came in the house, you know, up and find, oh, he drinks, I guess... I can drink because he's a good Christian you got to be careful you got to be careful what your conduct when other people see it and when they see you doing your thing hey we may have power they may look at you oh maybe I got that same power for if any man see thee which has knowledge you know the Bible you know Christ you know your what you're supposed to do Sit at me in an idol's temple. And idol's nothing we ever read. That's nothing. Absolutely nothing. I would assume that Paul would go to the idol's temples to preach Christ because he did it at the at the, the statue of the unknown God on Mars Hill. I would assume that Paul would go to these places and preach Christ. But here in Corinth, there are idol's temples all over the place. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboiled, emboiled in, which is encouraged to eat those things which are offered to idols? Here's a young Christian. Well, there's a spaghetti dinner here at the Catholic Church. I'm hungry. My, my family's hungry. We'll just go down there and get a spaghetti dinner. And they'll pray in the name of every every saint and every soul but God and Jesus Christ. Though thy brother, excuse me, though thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died. If you're doing something that a weak young Christian is trying to get over, trying to do right in the eyes of God. And he sees you doing something that he believes is wrong. Though you have liberty. And this guy is like, you know what? I shouldn't be doing this for this God X anymore. And well, what's that Christian over there doing that? We're not supposed to be, I'm, we're not supposed to be doing that anymore. Isn't it supposed to be about, see, he has no knowledge. See, you can have knowledge of great things in the Bible, but. Where's the charity to, you know, to sit this person down and help him to grow? I guarantee in Corinth, there's probably too many places you could not get a meal without it being offered to a God. What do you do? Starve to death? I remember when I got saved in 1987. I was married in 1990. I decided, you know what? My wife and decided, we're not going to go anywhere where there's alcohol sold. You can't do that today. Alcohol is sold in, in the, the convenience store. The hard liquor is being sold in the convenience store. Everywhere you go, there's alcohol. You can't escape it. So now, we've got to go to a place to buy our goods where there's alcohol. Now, a Christian gets saved. 
He goes to the grocery store. That grocery store usually has one or two aisles for that alcohol. Don't let that young Christian catch you walking down that aisle. Because he's going to think, oh, wow, I guess, I guess alcohol is okay because they're down that aisle. You can't escape it, but you don't have to conform to it. And though thy knowledge shall the weak brother per perish, you make him go off astray, thinking it's okay, not knowing, having no knowledge for whom Christ died. So that guy is saved. Whom Christ died, he's saved. But when ye sin so against the brethren, saved, and wound their weak conscience. Ye sin against Christ. As Christ told Paul, why persecute thou me? So when you're going over out Aunt Sally's house and people know she's a dedicated Catholic and she's going to say that Catholic prayer and young Christians see, hey, they're having a meal over there out there. And we know she's a dedicated Catholic. Well, wow, look at that. There's Christians there. It must be okay. You better confess that as a sin. You got to watch our conduct. We have all kinds of liberty. We got a Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, but we don't have no responsibility. And we're going to realize that when we get to Christ, at the judgment seat of Christ, one of those gold, gold, silver, precious stones, or one of those wood, hay, or wood, hay, or stubble, is going to be offending Christians. And sometimes we may not even know we've done it. I used to wear cigarette shirts all the time. I must have thought somebody was okay. Because I was wearing them. Well, thank God I had a brother come up to me and tell me one day, you know, those things are going to go. Really? Yep. And I got rid of them. Wherefore, if me make my brother to offend. See, we make fun of being offended today. Everyone's offended today. But it's in the Bible. Wherefore, me make my brother. Aren't we supposed to love the brethren? Aren't we supposed to care for the brethren? Wherefore, if me make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth. Least I make my brother to offend. I'll give up all those food that's given to that idol so that Christian can grow in grace and get all the benefits. I am not going to deter him. I'm not going to kill him. And when I mean kill, you know, just kill his walk. You got to take young Christians again the week. We got to bring them up right. And they're not being brought up right today. I'm sorry to say, I would say 10, 15 years, if the Lord tarried, I would hate to see what the Christian church of the Bible will be like. It will not be. If Revelation 3. They're rich. They're wonderful. They're great. And God's going, Ugh make me sick and that's a condition of the church we got to realize in these points right here i said in corinth everything was given there all these cities had their main deity they had temples to them and there's christians that are getting saved out of this god godless god religion and they want to serve the true god they want to do right and they look around and in this world of American Christianity, these, these young Christians would fall and fail by the lotful. And it's a shame.